Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to use a temporized formula on an air handler with electric resistance strip heating in order to measure the airflow. So we're going to be measuring the CFMs of the this system right here, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be measuring the voltage and the amperage on the electric strip heater, and the strip heater looks just like this, and we're going to also be reading our temperature rise from the return duct to the supply duct in order to figure this out. You have to have access to the electrical compartment, but you need to cover up the blower motor compartment, and that's why I have these magnets here. We're going to be putting some cardboard here. We could also use metal instead, but you want to make sure it's nice and tight up against there. So now we're going to go ahead and get into it. So we have our temporized formula. We have that written in our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. And in this book, we go over the temporized formula for electric resistance heaters, such as in an air handler and also in gas furnaces and also in oil-fired furnaces. We have an example down below. And in this book, we also go over some troubleshooting problems and static pressure readings. So we go over some examples of that for air handlers and for furnaces. So you can check out this book over at our website at acservicetech.com and it's also available over at amazon.com. I wanna go over a few considerations that you wanna do and one is that when we're taking our temp reading with our temp reader in our ducts, we wanna use bead type temp sensors like this and the way that we would use them is we would just go ahead and screw a hole with a quarter inch sheet metal screw right into the return duct and right into the supply duct. The thing is, the return duct, it can be anywhere very close to the air handler, but for the supply duct, you want to have it out of the line sight of the electric strip heater. And the reason for that is you don't want the radiant heat energy affecting your temperature measurement. It would make it too high, and so you want to be back a little bit further, and that's why we're all the way over here. So that's one consideration. Another consideration is that you do not want to have your hands in here while the amperage is, is running. So, so while the blower motor is running, while the electric strip heater is running, you don't want to have your fingers in here trying to take measurements. So we're going to be using our AC amp clamp. We're going to set that up ahead of time and we're also going to be using our probes with our alligator clips. So when we turn the system on, our hands are not even going to be in here. It's just very, uh, a very important thing. So. Another thing is, in order for you guys to be able to see the amperage, I'm using a large wire, and so you know the power is off, and I did check it with my multimeter to verify that it's off, but I'm using a large wire right here. And what I'm doing is, I'm coming off of the electric strip heater, it's actually over here, in there, but on the strip heater that's in the inside of here, there's a wire that comes from here and it goes to the temperature limit. And that's the wire that I'm extending out, because the the wire that was in there was was very small. So I'm just extending it out so I can have my multimeter outside of the electrical cabinet so that you can see it. You don't have to do that in the field. You can just stick your multimeter in there as long as you can still read it. You know, you, you get that all set up before you even turn the system on just for safety and you don't remove it until after you shut the, the system back off again. Another consideration to be aware of is to make sure that you have your electrical compartment open in order to take your readings, but your blower motor compartment is, is sealed fairly shut. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna have a piece of cardboard here and I'm using several magnets in order to hold it up against the frame. Now you could tape it up against the frame or you could use a piece of sheet metal or something like that. You just wanna make sure that your sheet metal is not going up into your electrical wirings for safety, but you just wanna make sure that this is covered. And before you cover over this, while the power is off, you want to switch your taps. So for instance, if you're trying to check your airflow for cooling speed, you're going to want to check your, your taps because you may have one speed for heat, one speed for cooling, or you may have a speed just for your fan, and then another speed just for your, for your cooling. So if you're trying to check your airflow for, for cooling mode, then you want to make sure that you're switching your heat and cool taps on, your, on the relay on this board up here or if you have taps at your blower motor down here, then you can go ahead and switch them down, down there as well. Now on this particular one, the heat and the cooling are on one tap, so, so we're not gonna change anything on this one. One more thing to be aware of is just that you're taking your amperage reading and your voltage reading right at the electric strip heating taps. So you don't wanna take your voltage readings out here where you're supplying the air handler with voltage, you wanna take it at the taps, and that's why it's, it's very important to have your alligator clips on here ahead of time that you're not poking in there while the amperage is running for safety's sake. And you wanna make sure that you're reading your amperage of only your electric strip heating and not your blower motor, not the transformer. So we're gonna be using our voltage and amperage here 
along with our, our temperature rise, our, our differential, in order to determine our airflow. So now we have our cardboard in place, we have our magnets holding our cardboard there, and we have our AC amp clamp clamped around this wire right here, and we have our, our alligator clips on these two electrical connections, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug these in when we're ready, and there's rubber on the end, so we're not going to be uh, touching any metal. And then we also have our temp meter right here, and we have those two bead type temp sensors in the ducts, in through our quarter inch zip screw holes we made with our drill earlier. And then when we're done, we're just gonna be putting a zip screw back over those holes again. But we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. We're gonna hit the decimal point, and then we're gonna go look for a differential. So our differential should be very close to zero, and this meter was calibrated not too long ago, so it should be very, very close to zero temperature differential between the two probes, but it could be slightly different just due to the temperatures in those two ducts. And we'll go ahead and turn our AC amp clamp on, and we'll go ahead and turn it on. So first thing, the electric resistance is getting powered, and then the blower motor is, is going to turn on. And let's check our amperage. Looks to be right about 21.6 amps. And our temperature differential, what we're looking for is that we're looking for it to settle in into a constant temperature differential. Uh, but the thing is, what we want to keep in mind is if that temperature differential keeps rising, then that means that our, our blower motor speed is not high enough or we have an airflow restriction or something like that. So, but right now we're reading right about 19.3 uh, degrees as a temperature differential and 21.65. So, so that's what we got right there. And let's go ahead and check our voltage. And our voltage is 241.3. So we have our, our three measurements. This is right about 19.2 degrees. So we have our three measurements, and let's go ahead and input them into our formula. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now. You can turn it off at the thermostat, or since we're right here, I'm just going to turn it off at the breaker. So our volts times amps times 3.414 equals 17,835. Then we have 1.08 times the delta T, and that equals 20.74. So we have 17,835 divided by 20.74, and we're left at 860 CFMs. So what you want to remember is that for every ton of capacity, you want about 400 CFMs of airflow for, for a cooling system, for an air conditioning system. So that could be, say, 350 to 425 CFMs, and you could have a, a, on the lower side that 350 if you're trying to remove a lot of humidity out of the building, but we're right about on the higher side right there. We're at 430 CFMs per ton. So 860 CFMs divided by 2 for a 2-ton capacity equals 430 CFMs. So we're a little bit high. Uh, a lot of times what you're going to have is you're a little low, and, and that's due to some duct restriction or something like that, or the, the return grills are too small or something like that. But we also noticed that our temp meter right here, our temp rise was not, it wasn't continuing to rise, and it was pretty stable. It wasn't lowering over time. It was right about 19.2 to 19.4 degrees, so that's good. Make sure after you get this done that you're putting your blower taps back the way they were before. So if you have the heat and the cooling switch, make sure you put them back in the correct way again. And then you cover up your holes with your sheet metal screws. And you disconnect while the power is off. And then you put your cover on, then you can turn the system back on again. If you want to learn more about checking the refrigerant charge and airflow problems and preparing a system for refrigerant, Check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning, and we have this book and ebook both available at our website at acservicetech.com. We also have our paperback available over at amazon.com. Now, if you've already purchased this, we'd love to have a review over at amazon.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.